I am here at Osnabrück for the following reason. I am impressed by the fact that one of the most important dimensions of the present cultural revolution is not sufficiently accentuated, namely the fact that linguistic communication, both the spoken and the written word, are no longer capable of transmitting the thoughts and concepts which we have concerning the world. And new codes are being elaborated. And one of the most important codes is the code of technical images. So I came to Osnabrück to look at what those people are doing. Let me explain a little bit what I mean. It has been clear for several centuries now that if we want to understand the world, it is not sufficient to describe it by words. It is necessary to calculate the world so that science has had ever more recurrence to numbers, which are images of thoughts. For instance, two is an ideogram for the concept pair or couple. Now, this uh, ideographic code, which is the code of numbers, has been developed in a, ma in a very refined way lately by computers. Numbers are being transcoded into digital codes, and digital codes are themselves being transcoded into synthetic images. So it is my firm belief that if you want nowadays to have a clear and distinct communication of your concepts, you have to use synthet synthetic images, no longer words. And this is a veritable revolution in thinking. And I am uh, very much interested in this. But I have to confess that as far as I, as my experience in Osnabrück is concerned, I haven't seen much in this sense. The reason may be that people do not yet know how really to handle the new apparatus. Is this an answer to your question? It can be. Maybe here something uh, uh, regarding your book, The Shift. Uh, the development of concepts and ideas. I try to say in this book the following. When alphabetical writing was invented, let's say 3,500 years ago, a total transformation of our not only experience, but even our action was involved. Before the invention of writing, traditional images were used as maps of the world. And the structure of images involves a specific way of looking at the world, which is the mythical way. Now, when alphabet was invented, mythical thought gave way to historical critical thought, because the structure of linear writing is a unidimensional, unidirected line so that by and by people started to think historically in a causal way and in a critical way. Now that this line has been disrupted into points, now that discourse has been substituted by calculus, historical progressive thinking is being abandoned in favor of a new type of thinking, which I would like to call, let's say, a systemic or a structural way of thinking. Uh, so that I believe that we are present and witness to a revolution which can be compared to the one which gave origin to history. In my terminology, I say, before the invention of writing, people thought in a prehistoric way. After the invention of the alphabet, historical conscience was elaborated. And now we are beginning to elaborate a post-historical structural way of thinking. 
in your lecture here, you made a <coughs> distinction between the uh, stru structural and the funct functional complexity. That's quite right. Uh, can we hear something about Yes, that? I think that <coughs> systems can be complex in two senses. They can be structurally complex. For instance, there can be systems where the elements maintain a very complex relation with each other. But they can be also functionally complex, which means that if you use the system, you can use it in a complex way. Now, those two complexities are independent one on the other. A structurally complex system may be functionally simple, like a television box, which has a structure of almost impenetrable complexity, but the use of which is extremely simple. On the other hand, simple systems like the chess game can have very complex functional manipulations. It is a fact that functionally complex systems are a challenge to creative thought, whereas functionally simple systems are stultifying, idiotic. Now, the complex systems which now are coming about are complex in a structural sense. Whether they will be functionally complex or not depends on us. For the time being, those complex systems are being used for functionally simple uses, which is why uh, the intellectual, aesthetic and even ethical level of mankind is lowering. But this is not the fault of the system. It's the fault of the users of the system. We may in time learn how to give a functional complexity to these structures. And this is what I am uh, committed to. Do you think it exists or it develops a discipline uh, which we can call the philosophy of images or, or theory of images now? Yes, I think there is a long history to the philosophy of images. Most of it is negative, because due to our Greek and Jewish tradition, philosophy has a prejudice as far as images are concerned. It is the prejudice that an image is only a copy, a simulation of thought, so that either it is forbidden to make images, or images are being accepted with a great distrust. But I think this is now changing because the images no longer represent the world. Those new images are now articulations of thought. They are not m copies, but projections, models. So a new attitude to the image is necessary, and I think it is developing. Benjamin was one of the first thinkers who articulated this, and I believe that we are all in this tradition. And, uh, who are the scientists who, in this century, work in this uh, the direction? For who, who are those scientists who are important for you, uh, even if when you, uh, your idea are not uh, in the same uh, direction? I can give you two names. On the one hand, Roland Barthes, which to me is very important, and I started from his thought, although I consider it totally wrong. And on the other hand, on the other extreme, McLuhan, who proposes an attitude toward the image, which I consider fascistoid. I am absolutely against him, but still, it is a point of departure. May I mention a third thinker, Abraham Moll, with whom I, who is a close friend of mine, and with whom I am in almost daily contact, but with whom I tend to disagree more and more. I would like to say the following, if I may. Every revolution, be it political, economic, social, or aesthetic, is in the last analysis a technical revolution. If you look at the big revolution through which mankind has gone, let's say the Neolithic Revolution, or the revolution of the Bronze Age, or the Stone Age, or the, or the Iron Age, or the Industrial Revolution, every revolution is in fact the technical revolution. So is the present one. But there is one difference. So far, 
techniques have always simulated the body. For the first time, our new techniques simulate the nervous system so that this is for the first time a really, if you want to say so, a really uh, immaterial and, to use an old term, spiritual revolution. I think that it is important to say this in your context. Thank you.